can you have more peace and less anxiety in this troubled world? I want to talk today about God's gift of true peace because let's face it, anxiety is all around us. You may be feeling it, you may be seeing it play out every single day. So as a daughter of the king, we are called to be set apart. So we are going to talk about that a little bit today. This will be a quick episode, but grab your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 26. Are you a Christian woman over 40 who is struggling with consistently low energy and fatigue? Are you tired of trying to navigate the ever-changing health chatter all around you? And do you wish there was a simple solution to just feeling good? Boy, do I see you and I hear you. Hi, I'm Michelle, and as a holistic health coach and fellow midlifer, I have realized the answer to our whole health concerns isn't in the online search bar, those fad diets, and endless exhausting workouts. Listen, beautiful mama, as the heartbeat of your home, you have spent your life caring for others well. So now is the time to take good care of yourself, get back your energy, and reclaim your entire health during this season. So if you are ready to stop striving and start thriving as your healthiest whole self, then you are in the right place. Grab your iced coffee, a notebook and pen, and let's treasure your wellness. Okay, you really cannot turn on the TV or start scrolling through social media without seeing some form of anxiety, stress, unrest, no peace all around us, right? And most likely, if you're seeing it, you are feeling it or you are starting to feel it. But as daughters of the king, we are called to be set apart. We are to look differently and to act differently. But how do we do that? How do we do that when things around us are so insane and we are seeing the world fall apart? Because the world is full of chaos and unrest. But unrest is the exact opposite of what Jesus gives us. Jesus gives us rest because he is our rest. Now, while Jesus was doing his ministry here on earth, he was questioned and belittled a ton, right? But he always seemed to keep his cool about him. Aside from (laughs) that little bit about the money changers in God's house, well, then he had a holy righteous anger about him, right? And see, righteous anger can be a good thing. But he, for the most part, modeled how we can live our lives in a peaceful manner so that others can also see that. Because when others see the peace that we have, they want to know why. When things are all a mess, when the world is crazy, and when there's so much that we are unsure about, Why would we be showing peace? Why would we be showing a calmness about us, about our demeanor? And Jesus really modeled this for us because because of what he did on the cross. That is why we can have the peace that passes all understanding. That is why in Isaiah 9, he is called the Prince of Peace. With the world being all in chaos, with no peace at all, Because of Jesus, as a child of God, I can have peace, you can have peace in the midst of the chaos. Now in Matthew 26, verses 36 through 46, when Jesus is in the garden and he's praying, he was troubled. And three times he asked his father for the cup before him to pass. So as you see that Jesus took along a few disciples and he said to them in verse 38, I am deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, So couldn't you stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Boy, is that the truth. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came again and found them sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open. After leaving them, he went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. 
Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? See, the time is near. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go. See, my betrayer is near. And of course, you know that Judas was the betrayer and you know the rest of the story. But why was he asking the father to let this cup pass? I mean, in the past... I used to think that it was because of the pain and the torture that Jesus was going to experience, that he knew he would experience that. He knew what dying on a cross was going to be like. I really used to think that that was the biggest reason why he was asking God to take this away from him. Yes, I also knew it was because God was turning away from him at that moment as he took our sins upon him. But in my minute mind my flesh I really thought it was mostly the pain and the torture and that just shows my immaturity right in the faith but as I dug into the word more as I became more focused and more intentional with my daily quiet time with the Lord I began to see that it was the fact of the father completely forsaking him completely turning his back on him that troubled Jesus the most. Everything else that was going on in the world at that time, all of the horrible things that were happening, all of the challenges of the world at that time, he was calm about all of it. But this rattled him. This shook him a little bit. This is what troubled Jesus the most. The fact of the father completely turning his back on him, completely forsaking him. Because above all, no matter what was to come, no matter what he knew in advance he would experience, that was the thing he didn't want to experience. But yet he did for me and for you and for humanity. And so that got me thinking, God turning away from me should trouble me too. Being separated from God should greatly distress me. But because of Jesus, he took everything on his shoulders for me and for all of the world. He took all of our punishments in our place. He took it all. And he did that so that we can have more peace in a crazy, chaotic, insane world so that we can have true peace that makes no sense, none at all. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He knew how bad the world was going to get. He knew that we would be here in this time, in this place, right now, dealing with these issues. But he is our true peace. So can we have peace in our responses to others? Can we have peace as we are seeing things play out all around us? Can you have peaceful thoughts about yourself? Do you let the world rattle you or do you stay calm and seek your father's face? How many times have I let the world rattle me? But God's mercies are new every single morning. And this is why we get up and we start fresh every single day and we dig into God's word so that we can have those peaceful thoughts about ourselves. We can have peace in our responses to others and we can stay calm and seek our Father's face. Changing our anxious thoughts to thoughts filled more with peace takes practice, takes time, takes discipline, takes us getting into God's word, reading what he says about us, believing what he says about us, knowing his character, knowing who he is, what he says, and what is true. So that then we can have true peace. True peace that makes no sense in a crazy and anxiety-filled world. Father God, thank you for your word that is true, that it will never return void. Thank you for your son who took our punishment on the cross, that he suffered at the hands of others for crimes he did not commit. But thank you that because of Jesus, 
we can have true peace. Father, help us to seek you in every single area of our lives. Help us to seek your Son and to seek your Holy Spirit as we walk out this life as a reflection of the peace that you are, as we walk out this life in a way that honors you and shows others Jesus. For it's in his holy name that we pray. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, friend. I hope it challenged you, stretched you, and encouraged you in some way. If it did, would you stop right now and share this episode with someone else who has been praying for a breakthrough in her whole health? It would also be such a blessing to me if you would take 30 seconds and leave me a review for the show on Apple Podcasts. One more thing, come on over to the Treasured Wellness community on Facebook, Holistic Health for Christian Women Over 40. I would love to welcome you there. Treasured Wellness can also be found on soulwin.tv and Christian Mix 106 online streaming radio. So check out those two amazing platforms. All right, have an amazing day. And remember, you are a beautiful treasure.